everyone. Uh, this is Professor Paulo Doron Araujo again with another of our global law uh, videos with invited professors from parts of the world. And today, as you can see, we are not in the regular studio that we use to actually record this kind of conversations and interviews because we decided to do in the classroom where the course is being taught. And why we decided to do so is because actually we have this time four professors at the same interview. So we're trying to do something different as a round table so we can get impressions and we can actually listen to what are the words from the four professors together. So basically, as you will see during this video, we are in a different environment, but I think it's going to be even better because everybody will feel like they were in the classroom with the professors. So we, we, we will try to transmit the same uh, feeling that the students had when they were with the professors. So first of all, I would like uh, to thank the four professors that came from different parts of the world to our global law program to teach about anti-corruption matters regarding the BRICS countries. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So I will first introduce each professor, and then I'll pass the word to them so we can start the conversation. So we have Professor Gu Zhuan from the Chinese University of Political Science and Law, uh, who is here. Professor Zhuan, thank you very much for joining us and for coming to Brazil. It was an honor for us and we hope you have liked the same that we have liked to have you here. Then we have at my left, Professor Eduard Ivanov from HSE University in Moscow, Russia. Professor Ivanov, thank you very much for being here with us and for spending this time in Brazil with us. And also we have Professor Tebello Tabain from Cape Town University, South Africa. Professor Tebello, it was a pleasure. It actually is a pleasure to have you here. And finally, Professor Vaselin Popovsky from Jindal Global University in India. Professor, it was an honor to have you here, and we hope you are enjoying Brazil as much as we are enjoying your presence uh, here. Our pleasure and our honor, too. Thank you very much. I would like also to mention that like, it was possible to bring professors here uh, thanks to the sponsorship of Brazilian uh, education, high education agency CAPS. So I'd like to point out and mention uh, the support we are receiving from CAPS. Thank you, CAPS, for making it, this whole experience possible. It was a very nice initiative. Thank you again. And also, thank you, FTV, for putting all this together. So presentations made, introductions made, and uh, also uh, the thanking part being already taken care. I would like uh, actually to discuss with the professors today basically to learn a little of what are um, the matters that they are discussing in this course that they are having regarding anti-corruption in the BRICS countries for uh, the, the global law program here at Direito TV São Paulo. And I will start with Professor Zuan. So please, Professor Zuan, if you could just uh, let us know what, on what are the topics that you discussed, what was the course, and, 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 and how did you, and how, how, how was your experience actually teaching this course here at mm. FGV? Okay, uh, so, uh, so I just gave a lecture uh, on the anti-money laundry in China. Uh, with uh, four other professors from different countries. Um, I think this is a, a very uh, unique uh, experience for me because I lectured across the world uh, many times, but this time is very different because uh, like some of uh, our colleagues mentioned, it is a sharing and a learning process. Uh, I gave the lecture and I also sit in the lectures uh, given by other colleagues, so I learned a lot from them. So uh, we have a very experienced expert here like Professor Edward and Professor Vaseline, and uh, we also have this uh, very promising young Professor Tabello. So I learned uh, a lot from each of them. So it is a unique experience. 
And we learn from Chinese <laughs> yeah. very distinguished. Yeah, so it's yeah. like a, a comparing and uh, exchange uh, process. And also, I was uh, impressed by the uh, Brazilian students here. Uh, so I was uh, I was uh, impressed by uh, how active uh, they took part in the uh, the uh, discussion in classroom. And I I was also impressed by how fluently they uh, speak English. So uh, yeah, I had a very good impression on the students here. Uh, and also, I'm happy to be here because I worked with uh, this research group uh, for quite a uh, quite a while, uh, three years since 2016. So we worked mostly um, by email groups. So now, uh, all sometimes we we met uh, in the annual conference or academic conference once or twice a year. But I think uh, this experience is very uh, is a very effective way of working with each other uh, to to work out something. So I think uh, this is uh, uh, some, this this uh, uh, it's something we should continue uh, to do in the future. So uh, that's uh, uh, last but not least. I learned a lot uh, about uh, Brazil before I came. It's it's my first time to be here, to be oh, in uh, mm -hmm. South America. Uh, so I know very little about Brazil before I came here. And since I I will, uh, I'm here, I learned a lot about Brazilian history, culture, uh, legal system. And I also got a lot of questions uh, from the uh, from colleagues here and uh, students about China. So I I think it's a very good exchange. All right. so that's all from me. Nice, very nice, Professor Zuan. Thank you very much for your intervention. So I would ask now, Professor Edward Ivanov. So, Professor, if you could tell us how was your experience teaching this course, what you addressed, and and what were your impressions. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank the Federal University for inviting us to teach this quite interesting course on cooperation of BRICS countries in combating corruption and money laundering. Uh, first of all, it's very important to say that the cooperation of BRICS countries has been becoming an important part of global international agenda. And probably you know that leaders of our countries have meeting in Brasilia, in the capital, these days to discuss the cooperation between our countries and, of course, I think this event is a great opportunity for the students to learn the experience of all BRICS countries. And it's also a great opportunity, I think, for us, I fully agree with my Chinese colleague, that it was also interesting for all of us to compare the legal systems of our countries in combating corruption and combating money laundering. Um, I was very happy with the group of students. Uh, it was really international, besides of local Brazilian students. We have students from Germany, we had students from Italy, from the US, and number of other countries. Uh, the conversation was great. It was very interactive. It was not only my lectures, but also we discussed some topics with students. And of course, we had an opportunity to share our experience, to uh, explain what are the difference in typologies of money laundry, difference in typologies of corruption in our countries, and also, also explain what are the difference in legislation and in legal practice. Because, for example, you know, money laundry uh, is strictly regulated topic. There are international standards, FATF standards, comprehensive and regional conventions. But at the same time, the typologies of money laundry are different in all the countries. And in this regard, the approach of legislators, the approach of law enforcement bodies are quite different. We could compare it, we could explain to students what is this difference, what is important to know, and we could also learn from each other. So, Professor Ivanov, thank you very much for your intervention. Uh, actually, this is the spirit of the, glo the global law course in FGB. So, the idea is to bring students from many parts of the world, professors from different parts of the world, and put everybody together in order to get a better knowledge of legal differences and legal similarities in order to build a, an international idea of how law is apply, applied everywhere and for us actually to develop a, a single concept of what is going 
right and what is going wrong, what we could evolve, what we could avoid, and things like that. So as far as I can see, our goal was absolutely achieved by the course you taught here because basically our main idea was that that you just described. So thank you very much again. I would like to move on with Professor Tabello. Uh, and I would like uh, to listen to you uh, uh, regarding the other initiative that put us all together here in Sao Paulo uh, in, the la in the recent days, in the last days, because like besides the course that you came here to teach, there's also the uh, Law School's Global League Research Project that we have been working on since 2016, as Professor Zuan mentioned. If you could please explain to our audience what this project is all about and, and uh, what were your experience regarding the project and, and just Feel free to let us know about the project, please. Yes, thank you very much. Um, one of the most important uh, duties or functions of a scholar is to study phenomena around us and uh, produce research that fits into a developmental agenda of the states that we live in and uh, countries that uh, cooperate with our, with our countries. In our particular uh, context, we are in the BRICS uh, block, and uh, as scholars from BRICS countries, we decided to produce research that uh, contributes towards the development agenda of this block. And we picked on a topic on corporate compliance uh, and uh, zoomed in specifically on anti-money laundering and anti-corruption as two important uh, subjects that uh, or two important areas that tend to hinder progress in our countries. So we decided to study this phenomena in our different countries and um, try to compare and contrast our legal systems and how they handle these this two important topics. So that is what we did and uh, as colleagues were saying, uh, the comparison came up with uh, quite interesting facts and, uh, and scenarios. Uh, so we are in the process of finalizing a book. Uh, this book will hopefully be uh, launched in, um, in Sydney in 2020, where we basically uh, discuss in, in much more detail our different context as far as anti-money laundering and anti-corruption uh, are concerned. Oh, thank you very much. So I would like to move to Professor Vasilian. And I Actually, I would like to focus on two specific matters. First, I would like you to, to speak us a little about your passion about football and oh. how did you feel about Brazilian football and the experience of being here and actually uh, getting in touch with the football culture and everything. Uh, and then after that, I would like to focus on specifically one point that Professor Tabello mentioned, which was Last Monday, we were all together in a, in a, in a classroom, just like that, yes. to finalize the final chapter of the book, where we, all, we put all the comparison together, and then actually we were negotiating how our impressions about the other legal frameworks would be uh, all put together in order for us to conclude. And uh, I was there and I, and I noticed that you actually interacted a lot because you, you basically were feeling that that was a, a very important part of the work. So if you could just let us know what happened there, but first tell us about okay. your football passion. Oh, uh, <laughs> definitely. I'm, I'm a big fan of football and particularly of Brazil football, which is an amazingly attacking football. It's uh, very different from uh, some of those now strong teams in Europe which score one goal and go to defense to defend that goal. Brazilian football was the opposite. Uh, and I watched a couple of games, by the way. I, I watched Palmeiras and Botafogo and Vasco da Gama and Corinthians. And indeed, it's a pleasure to watch because everybody goes to attack, thinking less about defense. And that makes the beauty of the people watching football rather than score one goal and go everybody in defense. So. Our pleasure to be in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also first time uh, and I enjoy every single minute, every single second here. And particularly, yes, that meeting you, you mentioned and Tabello mentioned was very interesting because if you look at the BRICS countries, 
Uh, they are quite different on one hand because some of them are post-colonial, like uh, South Africa, India, and to Brazil in a different way, post-colonial. And Russia and China are very powerful historically and culturally countries. So the uh, and some of those are common law countries and some are civil law countries. So the, the, they are different in history, in culture, in uh, traditions, in law. But when we came together and we started looking at the legislation and uh, practices of combating corruption and money laundering, we found a lot of similarities because the danger in the challenge is so big, uh, the governments and the courts and the lawyers and everybody in our countries have to face those challenges and somehow they develop similar practices. They have to combat uh, money laundering and uh, even Domestically, the efforts can be very easily compared, and that's exactly what we did in that meeting. We put together those criteria that the OECD Convention established, the jurisdiction and the sanctions and everything else, and looking back into our domestic system, and somehow I'm talking about India, uh, although I'm a Bulgarian, but uh, from Indian perspective, it's very... Uh, fruitful and very instrumental, I would say, to compare for us what other countries do, where we are behind, where India is behind, or where we have some doubts, what can we learn from China, from Russia, from South Africa and Brazil. So I think that, that experience, that comparative law and global law is the only way the legal profession has developed. And it's also useful for students to listen to all of us and somehow also to open their eyes for everything outside this university, outside this country, how the other different jurisdictions and countries and governments look at the same problem. And I think that's why somehow our project and our book, which is coming in a few months, will uh, be an excellent reading because we present different perspectives but on the same single big challenge which our governments are fighting against corruption money laundering and organized crimes thank you very much so um just to finalize here i would like to thank you all again not only for being here, but also for being uh, very proactive, being very attending, and, and actually sharing with us all this experience. I hope this is just the first phase of our common research work, and we can, we can evolve to another phases, always bringing together this BRICS uh, thing that actually makes us uh, work on comparison uh, that w is not usual. Basically, people are always trying to compare uh, with American law or with British law. And here we have something that is quite new, which is let's compare different countries that have diff that, that are still different, but have some similar similarities that brought them together. So again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for, for being in Brazil. And I hope you can come back soon. Thank you very much.